one. Hello and welcome back to episode two of The Man from Osirian, The Infernal Vault, Pathfinder Society edition. When last we left our party, well, they're not adventuring party, they're Pathfinders. And no, we're not registered Pathfinders. I'm sorry, don't look for us online. I'm afraid we can't head over to the local gaming shop and hang with you all. But we did kind of try to stay official. 20 point buy, no crafting feats, that sort of thing. Yadi da, and all of that. So let's recap. We met the auditioneers, musketeers, auditioneers. We met some fans, some friends, some run off and start their own podcast and be my competition interns in our last episode. But tonight we have the man himself. Mr. Frank Hamilton is in the house and he shall be playing. Well, you'll find out soon enough, but he shall be playing Frank. Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, today I'll be playing Old Man Aerith. It's one of my favorite characters, so I'm just happy to be involved in this game. Get a chance to play him. Can you tell us a little bit about him? He's popped up, and he was in the future. So it doesn't mean I won't kill you, but he's in the future as a small cameo in our one-shot Attack of Opportunity series where we tried out 2nd Edition, didn't play Doomsday Dawn, and went for a Pathfinder Society adventure called Arc Lord's Envy. Yeah, well, um, let's see. The character Old Man is Old Man Al-Basir Anas, would be his full name. Um, he's a Kelishite, a uh, little bit of a mixed bag here. He's a cloistered cleric of Phrasma, so he doesn't get out a whole lot. I built the concept around a friend of mine that I, you know, kind of half-joking. But, yeah, I mean, he should be fun. Just think of him as kind of the Old Man Magoo. Old Man Magoo? <laughs> Yeah, you know, That's... he's got tons of skills, but, you know, in the heroic kind of fantasy setting, he's really not a great combat cleric. Well, but... you have the cloistered cleric archetype, do you not? Yes. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I mean, so, uh, you know, he's a little bit nerfed on the spell casting, but he, their bonus is their skill checks and things like that. And they can use some uh, scrolls and aid others a little bit better than normal. Very cool. And returning from last episode, we have studying at Rollmonger's side, learning what little we know about podcasting and vodcasting, but hey, he's free help. The coffee's cold because we're in the virtual world here. Barely two people in the same house, let alone two people in the same country. Mr. Jared Mercer is in the house tonight. Hello. And Jared, you had dared to play the new summoner the unchained summoner which is funny because unchained which we've been pushing on a couple things in this without announcing it um opens up a lot of options for rogue does some interesting things with barbarian whatever but the word on the street is it is totally nerfed as they say the summoner would you agree with that assumption in some cases yes okay. um it basically turns the his main ability the uh edelon into a template form almost instead of picking and choosing what you want uh, you get a few you also get your skill list kind of nerf but in doing so you also get a few spells that the regular summoner doesn't get that is more helpful okay and um, you'll be playing who this evening uh, kyler silverthorn a half elf who uh, lost all of his family and in as he grew up became stronger and stronger in magic but dealing with the planar magics if you will and uh, tried to reincarnate his sister elder sister who saved his life but lost hers um, as his edelon and hasn't quite figured it out yet but at the same time is trying to do everything he can to be a good little brother okay and returning also from episode one we have a good friend of myself and my wife executive producer cheryl ball from back in the day a lady who learned pathfinder by my side a few years ago when i was still blissfully unaware and happy running around in 3.5 and didn't know the miracle which were archetypes in 3.75 as we call it which is the pathfinder world miss Ashley Anison Florence, also known as Delma. <laughs> Did I get every name in there? 
I think you did. Yeah. Okay, there you go. It's uh, all my aliases. I'm going to have to create a new one so I can keep running. <laughs> it's I, a joke. It's a um, joke. They, they can't all be gems. You just got to throw them out. And take I know. Your chances, right? I know. That's that's what they say. No, but I'm glad to. I'm glad to be here. I'm uh, super excited to keep proving to you that I'm willing to do this. You're willing to do this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, friend or no, you have to audition like everybody I else. Know. And the fact that you've offered to help with my website mm, helps. Right? Ups, yeah, right up the ready. <laughs> it helps. No. But no, 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 no. Nope. No. Nope. No, we're saying we're saying no to that. Uh, don't, <laughs> don't know exactly what's what's going on. So last but certainly not least, Ashley or shall we just say Ash P or a Ashley P? Like we got to work something out here because you know I am never, ever, ever going to pronounce your last name properly. This is never going to happen, Miss Pasquello. Pasquello. Pasquarello. 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 Or Pasquarello. Pasquarello. No, I. Okay. Nope. That that still won't. Get... Yeah. Like <laughs> moving on. Ash. <laughs> Ashley and we'll we'll call Ashley Miss Florence. How about that? There we go. I, that... I'll take it. I like it. Yeah, okay. We'll we'll go with that. We're gonna Whatever go. works. I need something to work for me or the audience is going to get mad and and you guys might find it amusing but I d I really don't think the audience is going to find this terribly amusing. I really don't. So, our players are in place or are they? Well, one of the full, one, one of the uh, worst things you can do in podcasting is try to DM while simultaneously handle tech, which unfortunately is my curse. Um, so while you've all been introducing yourselves, I literally used the wonderful world of D20 to transmogrify the map, which was play tested by our executive producer. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we're, we go now. <laughs> We're going to go now to the actual uh, the actual map, the the place of residence, the reason you're all here. As soon as I'm done modifying it, I guess we're getting some sneak peeks. <clears throat> what do we want to deal with first? Well, I think the boat scenario seemed interesting. You're hoping for what? A wiggling bag of kittens? I just wanted to. I wanted to know about whatever was in the bag that made the oomph. That made the oomph. Yeah, I mean that, that did. You know, bags don't normally move or make noises when you throw them down on a hard surface. It 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 does seem suspicious. And when the watch isn't around, you know, perhaps oh, I don't know the the new up and coming vigilante might take it upon herself to do something about it. Now, this was not an intended DM carrot. We just decided that since you were not hired by the Pathfinder Society, that, hey, you know, you got to witness this. Your character saying you patrolled this area gave me the idea and a little bit of dice roll. And hey, look, you saw this happened and ran away from the dungeon. Shame on you. <laughs> and now I had to call up Frank in the middle of his Sunday afternoon and say, dude, they, they try, you weren't even supposed to be in this adventure. It was just a, like an NPC cameo where you were in the background. And they're very close to you. You better, you better come on down just in case they poke you. And and here you are. And that's how that's how dedicated we are here at Rollmongers. You know, do I get to play? No, no, no. You're just in the background. You know, described by me. And then all of a sudden, last minute phone call going, get please get in here. I need you to play. <laughs> so a, a very special thanks to um, Frank Hamilton for showing up. So with a little bit of ambience. I don't know if you can hear that quiet sound bar I got going where you have the odd cat, Tomcat, crying in an alley. But our Pathfinders, starting with them, arrive upon the scene. And I will go again with the official sitting on the corner of a quiet street. The red bricked Declan House melds into the middle class buildings in the, this portion of Absalon. A small flickering candle can be seen through a barred window on the building's west side. A single door can be seen on the building's south face. And the odd tomcat prowling around can be heard echoing in the distance. Our druid, our druid's companion, Roxy the cougar, the <clears throat> blood pelt cougar from far away distance, Zatan, 
story pending. And our summoner with humanoid, tall, creepily resembling, resembling his dead sister's Edelon in tow, arrive upon the scene. This is what you see. What do you do? Well, we have a right to be here. We've been asked to find this vault. Um, dear Druid, uh, do you have any way to detect traps by chance? Because I, for one, do not. So are we just going to, you know, break a window and get in there and do the good work? Or uh, do we have a cleaner way of taking care of this assignment? I uh, I don't have a way to detect traps. No. Uh, are you dead set on breaking a window? Drawing I attention? Mean, we could try the door. That's a good point. We could try the door. <laughs> I'm just thinking ahead of, of you know, possibilities. No, that's great. There's I love it. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, didn't the, uh, didn't, didn't the commander... Uh, suggest that there might be a back door. Do we want to go look for that? Would that be safer? Or uh, um, should we, you know, go in through the front door? I like I like testing this possibility first, you know. I did Can't mention you... a window. <laughs> that was in the description, so I can't deny it, just so you know. Yeah. Just saying. Let's, let's peek in the window and see if there's anything, you know, that we can see first. Before we make rash decisions about uh, where we start kicking in hidden windows. tunnels, where the guy said, "Don't don't bother trying to find one." This is not on the map. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna do one of those uh, Scooby Doo references here, and uh, all of us kind of like look into the window from different directions around the windowsill. Sure, which means it's time to get some pathfinders on the map. So, switching to our character page. And we're going to grab, of course, my computer freezes. We're going to grab Dina the Adelon. And we're going to place her over here. We're going to grab Kyler. And we're going to grab our Druid. And we're going to grab the infamous. Roxy the Cougar. Patent pending. <laughs> because she's not appearing on my map. So how are we going about this? Are you guys doing, you know, just wander over there? Or do we have a plan? Well, I'm not a sneaky person. In fact, I don't... The only place that I can confidently... Uh, say that I know my way around are the planes. So, um, and I will acquiesce to uh, the druid if she has a plan of action at this point. So oh, you're leaving it to me. <laughs> the country girl. Now that we're in the I'll city. Pick. <laughs> I'll, make, I'll make you a deal. I'll pick. You go first. All right. All right Come so again? I, <laughs> go look in the window. How does Go, that yeah, work? Take a look. Take a look in the window. She's got a. She's got better eyes than I do. <laughs> yes. Well, <clears throat> there is the flickering candlelight, and uh, the best thing about first level is I've given you more than enough chance to mention stealth, which you have not. So we just kind of amble up to this window. I Picture two people kind of like, you know, going on. How about uh, you go? You first, okay? Such and such, you know, and. Uh, it's like, okay, well, that that's fine. You know, that's fine. And beyond the flickering candle, can I have perception checks from everyone? <laughs> Call them up as soon as you get 24. the total. 24. Yeah. What do we see here? All right, um, Dina has an 18, I have a six. One perception. That's terrible. <laughs> Look at the walking into the windowsill. 
I, just, I think someone really, really needs to, you know, call an exterminator. This, this, this here house might be infested with bugs. Dina, what do you think? Does Dina actually talk? Uh, yeah, I have a, I have basically like a mental link. Is how it works, but she can also speak the languages I speak. That's even more creepy. Yeah, I know, eh? She speaks to you in your mind. After this, we're uh, we're going to take you to the hospital. <laughs> Make sure you're okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, no, that's, that's okay. Said, I not. 2019 and Patreon exclusive, as well as some of the Attack of Opportunity podcast years that I have had a wonderful time interviewing, have offered some part-time work as it were to um, do some voice acting now if you're watching the video and or you know getting this fresh out of the gate one way or the other you know you're going to miss that but some material is worth returning to polished edited and upwards of that and perhaps dina will have her own voice but unless jared would like to talk to himself because the edelon probably agrees with everything mm -hmm. uh i would i would offer the dm services or another player to uh you know Now, when you when I ask for perception, I actually do need animal companion and Edelon thrown right in. Yeah, I don't have Roxy. No, it's okay. No, I I've got Roxy. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll let you know if the cat starts growling or you know whatever on alert, because she'll just follow you around and act like a regular cat uh, until you direct her to do something with handle animal and such. Otherwise, you know, if she's alert, the ears go flat. You know that kind of thing. So, I've got. Uh, I have Miss Cougar. Is it Cougar uh, handled? So, do you want to roll for her or do you want me to roll for her? I got it. I got it. Okay, cool. All said and done. Awesome. Right now she's, uh, you know, interested in the cats meowing in the back alley. But she's uh, <laughs> she's got your six. Yeah, I got this. Yeah, she always does. Yeah. It did sound like a really bad 70s, like, detective show. You know, like, burr, 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 like a, just, just that enough disco twinge to sound like cop 70s and not porn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and she comes along and like, I got that. I got that. You know, your your loose cannon partner, Roxy, Roxy Roller. You know, just running along. Da, 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 da. You guys pull up in a Mustang or something. No, that'd be amazing. That would be that would be a horrible stealth check. Yeah, that's what that would be. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. One of my New Year's resolutions was not to tangent or digress on the mic so much. Some fans like it, most don't. So moving on. Who got over? 10? Anyone? I did. Kata? My Edelon. Your Edelon? My Edelon. Okay. So, our um, our druid does manage to peek inside. You hear more than see a couple of people. Hmm. Um, one is sort of out of view without you like sticking your head even like through the bars. The other one is relatively close to the window. And they're having a grumbled conversation about gambling and who's winning and who's lo who's losing. It goes something like this. Frank, if you care to assist. No, I've got seven queens and, and, and four jacks and a skull and crossbones. It's, it's got to mean something. It means you lost. I won. Look, you said that kings and wins were wild, right? Your deal, you called it. I've got three wins and a crap ton of kings because we really don't know what Pathfinder cards use. So we're assuming they're like relative to other planes of existence. And look, by your own rules, mate, I win. So cough up the coppers or I'll... And he just kind of like, you hear that wait, chink chink where he kind of takes wait, three wait. fingers and taps like you, the hilt of his short sword. You've drawn a king on a card. That doesn't count. It does. You were missing. You said you only had uh, fifty odd, uh, you know, fifty odd plates. So we made some. Remember? Well, I made some. Well, you in the loo. Well, maybe you're not wrong, but you win this time. Right. So cough up, and all deal. <clears throat> so uh, he's he's shuffling. He takes his money, and it's like, so uh, how about Queen's Wild this time, eh? And he just kind of puts them together. Anyway, this is the kind of conversation that you bear to witness. Um, Miss Florence, Ashley, 
Can I call you by your character name? Maybe I really should. I should Kida. really. I wish, <laughs> let's not suspend <laughs> belief. <laughs> Kida. All right. Um, so I, you know, I back away from the window and quietly tell Kyler that it sounds like, you know, it sounds like two people are gambling in there, probably, you know, wasting some time. I, I don't know if they're drunk, but they're definitely not sure what's going on. But uh, there are at least two people in there. I couldn't hear anyone else. Uh, did you have any luck? Oh. I, Dina, do you hear anything in there? <laughs> well, so, sorry, taking a moment in time while you're straining to listen, he was asking, is Adelon, you know, what did you hear? What do you think? And she's like, I think you should be quiet so I can hear what's going on, Master. <laughs> ah, good. I'll do that. Common is fun. <laughs> Yeah, you know, well, how how old are you, what do you, how long have you been a summoner? Like a couple of years, you know, it's just, you know, freshly formed every day. That's got to do something to the psyche even if I'm like a figment of your imagination. What I'd love yeah, if, if only it, been level 1 for like I would five. love it if no one could see you. Not only would that vindicate one of my old characters who talked to his dead girlfriend's spirit. Thank you Clinton for, you know, <clears throat> saying that never happened when I left the show. Um, but it'd be kind of cute like no one just acknowledges that alone. You have this you know, Amazon <laughs> following you around and like, who are you talking to? This is my dead sister. Okay. Anyway, moving on. So obviously a couple of guys inside. You can see the side profile of one of them. And I will little, you know, reveal you of the map here. No, 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 no. One room of the apartment. Kind of peeking to the right, you see a couch on the back wall. You see a table with odds and ends. There is a um, table practically propped right up to the window. And a man, sort of the, the proverbial 45 degree angle, you know, with sort of like his back to you. And facing in on that 45 degree angle past him, you see the other man voiced by the ever talented Frank Hamilton. Thank you, Frank. R round of applause for, for setting the entire mood of that uh, of that encounter for me. I just went off of him. He's a treasure. That's why we gave him his own show. Thanks for <laughs> finally showing up and being in it. Okay. So, um, <laughs> what do you want to do guys? Oh, and of course, because we had like lack of stealth and a bit of arguing, the bad guys may be intent on their arguing. Maybe they've noticed something. Mr. Mercer. Yes. Kyler. The druid finally turns to you and says, you know, what have you got? What do you notice? And your Edelon was, you know, quietly mumbling that you should be quiet because the, the big girls are listening. The parent, the adults are talking. The adults are spying. Be quiet. Yes. So what do you do? Um. Well, uh, do we, I guess we're going to, do we want to go in through the front door or in through the window or both? Doesn't look like we have a lot of room in there. The window is barred. This mm -hmm. is very obvious, by the way. Oh, is it barred like type deal? Yep. Okay. Like even if you look closely at the map, besides um, uh, Kada's um, abnormally. Oh, so those are bars. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Abnormally long shield bonus giving health bar on top of the mini here that we've accidentally uh, gone with. Well. We have a job to do, so let's go go in through the front door. You don't see anything else in there, do you? I ask quietly. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm still whispering. I'm still whispering. Because the druid, she is at the front position, so I guess I could move here and look in through the window and see if there's anybody. Do we know where the front door is? Yeah, it's on the south side of the building. Which, okay. for the moment, it remains in a weird obscurity. Though. So it's in the next room. Or is it in this room that we can have access to? Or can see it in? Is uh, you, she does not see a door. Okay, okay. we don't see a door, obvious. Uh, there is an exit to this room behind them, a little gap. So you assume that goes to another room or a hallway or something, which probably uh, join, adjoins the front door, yes. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. How brightly lit is this room? The single candle on the table. Just the candle? Just the candle. One thing I really like uh, about D20 is the bars that you can put over minis. Uh, it looks like someone's filled in the wrong one. Uh, to, but I can give the proverbial health bar and you guys have that video game sense of you know how you're doing or remind remind self to heal, you know. All right. Well, well okay. let's uh since we know people are here, Kyler, let's uh still whispering obviously. Like I said, I'm still whispering. No, it's that's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's, I got uh, it the first I I know there's the um you know my uh oh no stealth for you reference earlier but no it, it's good <laughs> you're, you're good so i think uh i think it'd be good to go to the front door and uh let's just see if anybody's the only thing i can see is maybe any magical things that might be there if anyone's laid any magic but beyond that i'm not gonna be much help with traps but the front door is better than a barred window yeah that's that's true um all right dana Go open the front door. You're <laughs> you're a lot stronger well, than I am. Let's uh I'm gonna detect Or at least magic. go listen to the front door, I guess would be the, the best bet. Okay. You're, I'm in a dark uh, right now. Now we're all in darkness. You're all in darkness. <laughs> That's that that means the scene is transitioning. <laughs> sure, we'll we'll go with that. It's a it's Star it's a, Wipe. Yeah. <laughs> we need a star wipe. The scene is transitioning to a, a new venue. Anyway, there we go. Much uh, better. Now we can see the front of the house. Now you can see the entire house. Oopsie. Uh-huh. Don't look. Don't look. Don't look at my face. So head around to the front. That's okay. I took I took upon myself, uh, like I said, this is a bit raw, a bit cut and dry, and a bit um, you know, lopsided in the technical because we're not just podcasting. I'm auditioning myself for a bit of a vodcast. We can see our tiny mugs in the corner here when we speak, and I'm trying to run tech for podcast and run tech for Roll20 for a bit of a vodcast at the same time. And as you can see, I, I might not pass this audition. Uh, you know, the the powers that be and, you know, the audience might go, just, just stick to the audio. So we'll see how it goes. But can you guys move your minis? As far as I know, you should have control. Uh, you should be able to click on it. No, all I can do a, is okay. draw. Okay, a quick go. a quick lesson in Roll20. At the very top left of your browser, you'll see an arrow. You need to click on it, make it blue, and go to select move. There you go. Very, very good. And I guess I will bring my cat with me. So everyone heads around to the front. So we got a bit of a... Quietly. You guys got... Yeah, you got, I like the SWAT team stack up. We got the Adelon on the door. We have Kata, like... At the door, we got Kyler behind and the cat kind of covering our six. Is this what we wish? Wait a minute. Kyler, I said you were going first. No, I said my Edelon was going first. All right. We're She's splitting got all hairs the skills. here. She's got all the skills. <laughs> she has all, all I, the skills. She, all I can do is uh, bring her into existence and um, cast light. Yeah, we're, we're definitely um, you bring her into existence. <laughs> what should they we sure pick the top out of two of us because i can cast light too <laughs> what have uh what has what have you informed the adelon to uh call you master creator kyler brother brother yeah we're going there we're brother kind of... dearest brother dearest really <laughs> stupid <laughs> <laughs> no seriously um kyler by name okay Okay. And that, that helps you cope, right? Yes. Okay. You, you best seek help. <laughs> the, the Pathfinders have a have a group, you know, for their agents. They that, keep, post-traumatic you, stress in the field. Got here? What got you they, here? They got tired of me in, uh, in Andor, and uh, they sent me here. They said I would find help, and I went into the, the place they told me to go, and I was told to come here. So, you know. Okay. Apparently, to make me better, I've got to um, bring this building down around our ears. I mean, find the vault. You're looking for documents, remember? It's very documents. sensitive documents that explain in depth the, the city's defenses. Good thing I don't have any fire spells. Come on, it's a classic spy movie, man. We can't let those plans fall into enemy hands. 
And you guys so are we burn them, right? <laughs> How you go about your mission is your own business, but we need to know what you do presently. Okay, uh, she, is at the door. If she's at the door, yep. um, I'm going to have her listen at it to mm -hmm. see if there's anybody in like directly on the other side. Okay. So here's she listens that. at the door. Give us the perception of checks. 20. Very nice. And we'll come back in a moment when we find out what she heard. Meanwhile, back at the docks. Go ahead, Scooby Doo. Give me a transition scene. Blah, 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 blah. All right. What uh, what do we got going on? Well, um, the sailors are like, "Hey, thanks for the help, buddy. We're gonna go over here now, thinning our numbers and making your job and DCs of like you know whatever you're up to much more difficult." Bye, and then I go back to the ship. Nice stuff too, right? So they've loaded everything except the, you know, the wiggling sack that you've tried to get close to and, um, you know, keep your eye on. You said specifically you're interested in the sack. Correct. Second, Secondary, the cart, following it here, then the men and everything, right? So you've been watching it go back and forth. And as far as you can tell, no one's sort of fireman carried the sack onto the boat. If anything, there's like a little bit of a pause in the action where they've got, you know, the last chest going up and they need a little help and they pull the guy like right off the wagon. So you got one guy, the driver, just kind of sitting there bored, looking around, and then you've got no one on the back of this cart guarding it. And you've so got I most want of, to most sneak of these back guys there yep. and check and see what's in that bag. All right. Staying within the, um, how shall we say, uh, virtual uh, you know, theater of the mind. You know, like that kind of thing. For a moment. Um, I'm going to take you, take you back to the wonderful world of Absalom. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have some stealth rolls? Now you have to half your movement. So what is your base movement right now? Um, 30. 30. Okay. Yes. So every 15 feet you move, you need to give me a stealth check. And okay. let's say that working on the boat, the lines and like in the sort of cargo area of this proverbial 100 foot long ship puts you within like 45 feet. Any okay, closer? So you you, yeah. So you see them, they see you any closer. Yes. Now I'm, I'm even going to be... Um, extra dramatic and have you you know you roll once let us know and the pun. first one is a 23 okay now if you like you can just make them you get you know you get your movement do a double move that's round one and then the second one would be move action you have an action open or would you like to move and then make a second movement and a move action as a perception check to make sure that you know you're not drawing too much attention on your way over that would probably be the ideal thing to do and make it's, sure it's, it's a wonderful way that you could stall for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way for you to stall for me. Perception was a 13. Okay. As far as you can tell, you know, people see you, but like I said, no one seems to care. Pay me too much attention. At the moment. <laughs> Suspenseful round two. Oh. Second stealth is a seven. Mm-hmm. And perception. Fourteen. So you suddenly I realize um, this is why, like in the second edition, why stealth is rolled by the DM because there's like I got a seven. You know you're gonna screw up, or you know maybe there's a DC. But then again, the DM could roll low with like, you know, do people notice what she's doing? Do they care? I mean, you're just kind of wandering over to the wagon, doing that little doo -doo 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 -doo, really quickly, hoping that no one really cares that you're getting near it. So. But uh, last, but, you know, certainly not uh, least. A 14 stealth. The perception to go with that is a 21. Okay. You get right up to the cart. 
And as far as you can tell, not even the driver, you know, they, it just glances at you and you look like a sailor and, and truck on by. No one seems to care. So I would, you know, just nudge at the bag and go, hello, is anyone in there? Okay. Quietly, obviously. Old man Arif. You are a scholar. You have yet to enter the clergy of the Phrasmic Priest Order, and you've set yourself up to be a cloistered cleric. You're actually studying. Any day now, prayers, due diligence, uh, your scholarly pursuits over the years or in your later years, maybe because you're getting old and start believing in the other side. It's kind of like, hmm, <clears throat> time to start reading up on religion. You know, a little lip service couldn't hurt, you know, that there might be a life beyond. How old is your character? Let's see here. You know, I've kind of oscillated between the age categories. Uh, I think I put him somewhere kind of solidly in the 60s. Okay. Yeah, 63. 63. And we've actually applied an age template to you. Yes, I have the old template. Okay. You're not sounding like yourself tonight, Frank. You actually sound like Ryan did in last night's Star Wars game where you sound like you've been 10% slowed. Oh, I was reading and trying to click on character sheets at the same time to see what was going on. I don't know. Uh, I would uh, suggest unplugging and replugging your mic, see if that fixed. It helped for okay. him. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that sounds good. Whatever you did just, just worked worked nicely. How about that? Yep, you're, go you're gold. All right. Okay. Sweet. Now, drawing your attention to my new map, here's a lovely, uh, <clears throat> shall we say, creative space. We have a dock. We have ships. We have goings-ons. Okay. Now, nothing beats D&D, &D, Theater of the Mind, Pathfinder, Theater of the Mind, but just to kind of give you that, that overall view the very long ship, which is about 100 feet long, okay? Obviously, there's a gangplank over the gap. But you see all the crates on the dock, this 15-foot wide dock that's a, itself a good 100 feet long? Yes. Okay. So I've had this sort of uh, horse and cart sally up, okay? Let's eliminate these one crates that would be in the way. And it's kind of come right up as close as it could. They've kind of weaved it around and it's in this area here, close to the dock, not too far away from the um, the gangplank where the loading was. And that, that places you okay. pretty much like right here on the edge. Okay? Mm. And as we were saying, old man Arif, you've even gotten to a point where you've began wearing holy symbols, you know, that type of thing. You've recently joined yeah. the Phrasmic yeah. ranks. Well, you dress for the job you want. Perhaps not the job you have. Exactly. But that's not why you were kidnapped. Terrible. You have learned three things. A noble member of the Declan family is the reason you were kidnapped. You were kidnapped by a Chalaxian mercenary company known as the Devil's Claw. And they haven't treated you poorly, but obviously the threat of physical harm and not exactly politely like sitting you down gently anywhere you go. They've, you know, bag over the head, put you in a sack, written you off as, you know, luggage, moved you around quite a bit. Perhaps they learned of your scholarly talents, wanted just someone to, you know, recommend or verify documents. But you were literally plucked off the street spent an entire day not knowing your fate, was fed once, barely given the chance to relieve yourself, bound and gagged for most of a day. And then in the evening, they put you on a wagon, drove you out to what you believe was some sort of building or house, brought you inside, lowered you on rope somewhere. You get the feeling you were underground. And you heard them constantly arguing. A noble woman constantly telling the this sort of loose-lipped 
devil's mercenaries to shut up. That's not what they're paid for. Stay in line. Let me think. Let me figure out this puzzle, that kind of thing, or we'll all be dead if the trap goes off. Then we finally, a couple rooms later, get into an open air space and it was all woohoo and get the ladders, boys. This pit is deep. And yeah, and they just a whole bunch of packing and crates and crumbling. And yeah, and a whole bunch of conversations with 20 odd guys talking about, hey, you know, what are you going to spend your cut on? What are you going to spend your cut on? And a majority of these guys hoisting stuff away. And then all of a sudden you're bagged and tagged again and brought um, to which was revealed to you because they finally un ungag you and everything. Dink. What seems to be an underground vault, an archive, stone shelves, rows upon rows, like four shelves too deep, you know, eight, 16 rows of just endless documents, scrolls, and like a private collection. This obviously excited you, but Unfortunately, they're just interested in have you pour over some blueprints, have you verify that they are, let's just say we say not outdated or, you know, a couple of, of, of verify signature that was put to them. So they knew that they were legitimate, not some kind of forgery. That was their mainstay. So under, you know, pain of death, recognizing some of the archaeologists and engineers that were famous in the city and that you legitimately over your cloistered cleric years of scholarly pursuits have come across signatures, documents, the way they stylize their prints, you know, all that type of thing. You were the man to verify its authenticity and you did. Thank you very much. You get to live, bag and tag. They throw you on a cart. And now that your usefulness is done, they're not so gentle. They literally tossed you, ouch, onto a cart. You heard hoof sprints, the cobblestone streets, and then you get that sort of salt air breeze smell permeating even the hood and you're lying there wondering you're tired you're bound there's not much you can do you're gagged you can't call out you know and but earlier on struggles hoping that somebody had heard you always met you with like a cuff to the head to the point where you just you know got dazed but now a light tapping on your foot at first it it wakes you from your delirium of in and out of consciousness but it's persistent. What do you do? Someone, a female voice is asking you a question. You didn't quite catch what it was. What do you do? So I'm currently gagged or no? You are gagged, bound, hand and foot, and in a big sack. But because you're in the sack, you're no longer hooded and blindfolded. The sack itself serves as your, you know, I cannot see. Okay, okay, hey, hey, shh, shh, shh. Um, I'll get you out of there. Just, shh, 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 gotta be quiet. Okay. Now, you were joking earlier about how handy it was you had that taking 10 to 8 other to blend in as a sailor because your strength is really low. Yes. So, I'm assuming you're looking at judging the weight of something that's in this. Now, the bag is not big. If there's a body or a person here, they're not an overly large person. They are average height and weight or less, but still might be a struggle for a little old you. Why don't you describe uh, your character? Because we have yet to actually, now there's the, you know, there's the persona that you appear to be. You know what I mean? The, the disguise, yeah. the form you take, um, but it works as disguise self. It does not work as alter self, does it? No, it, it works as disguise self. So Which anything mean, I do is... right is relevant to the disguise. This means it's like an illusion overlaid her as opposed to alter self where you could bulk up, slim down, grow wings, possibly even change your size, which means your body type remains the same. So without giving too much away about what, you know, someone pictures you, how tall are you naturally? How big are you naturally? What do you weigh? How strong are you? Um, she is of average strength. She has, you know, no, she's not, a weightlifter by any means. She is only four foot five in her natural height. She weighs about 85 pounds. Um, so she's very slight in stature. Um, so she is not someone that you're going to go to for help moving anything. And this this persona that you have on, you, you talked about your social persona. Now, right now you were blending and then you switched to being a sailor, like someone you'd seen. Right. So right now she's just dressed as a normal Joe Schmo sailor. You know, yeah. So you're always going, guy. I'm assuming you're always going for the five nine ish human. Yes. Okay. So being so short, it must be kind of strange that everyone like looks over the top of your head to talk to you and you're kind of at chest height. 
She's used to it, but yes, it no, took but, her a while to get used to that. Yeah, but this is something I want the audience to be aware of. Be aware that Ashley's character is always sort of looking up at everyone she talks to, even though they're looking straight ahead as if she were wearing a great big cat in a hat, striped hat that had a big mask or a head on it. Going, hey, this is me. Look up here. You know, the poor guy that ran around the Jar Jar Binks suit and he was looking at the guy's neck and everyone had to look up and going, oh, Jar Jar, you're so relevant to this movie. Moving on. <laughs> what do you want to do? I want to pull out my dagger and carefully cut the bag open. Okay. Slit, slit, razor sharp. Okay. Ooh. What are you wearing on your feet there, Varif? Sandals? Uh, are you as old as Jesus? Uh, dressing kind of like G Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, Jesus of Catapesh? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the Jesus of Catapesh. I, 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 I know the man quite young. Young. Uh, yes. uh, uh, whippersnapper. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm. <laughs> I'm dressed in well normal street attire. I would assume sandaled feet, yes, plain homespun robes. You know, nothing over over the top. Old men, gangly, bird-like legs sticking out, sandals chuckling away. You know, as if the toes are just happy to be free. Right? They're just scratching. Yeah, a foot sticks out. Toes kind of wiggle to to feel what's around me. Okay. Stop moving! I don't want to cut you. I never see that. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> there, I finally capped a tangent. Moving on. All right, so my freed? Uh, no, she's just opened up the bottom of the bag and your feet are, like your ankles are sticking out. Now she's telling you to stop moving around. I definitely stop. Okay. <laughs> and I would proceed to cut the rest of the bag off. Okay, of you yeah. need to actually climb onto this cart to keep cutting or you need to pull him off of it because you're on the, you're kind of like standing at the end of the cart quietly doing it. And It'd this, probably be easier for me to hop on. Yes. Can I have another stealth check? Because your weight will shift the cart and might draw the attention of the driver. You ever have somebody come along the back of your car and just kind of push down on the trunk? That would be a natural one. That would be a natural or a one. Total of five. Okay, so Frank, you want to be free? She's like, you know, you get distracted suddenly about like, oh, I'm just gonna have to get on this cart. Stop wiggling, you know? And you just kind of like get a knee up there and oomph and start slitting the bag up. And it's like, you realize that you've kind of like put your full weight on the cart and it goes wonk, you know, that kind of thing or that tip or creak. And the driver like turns around <laughs> and there you are a sailor cutting open a sack. It looks like a sailor's trying to steal from them. Oi, what are you playing at? Bugger off. And then he just kind of like stands right up in the uh, in the cart. Devil's so, claw to me! <laughs> Calling for reinforcements. What do you do? Oh, let's how about roll for initiative. Frank, you as well. Oh, jeez. Alrighty. Well, this is going swimmingly. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Now, initially, we'd ask Frank, "Is like, you know what? We're going to run an entire adventure, one shot. It'll be very short. It'll be kind of an origin story because you were in it, and we'll have you narrate it and all this stuff." And it's like, nope, nope. Character dragged you in literally by the heels, and now here you are, probably dead before the night's out. But hey, you know what? The man from Assyrian isn't Frank. Hey, now, I'm just saying, you're Catapesh. You're not from Assyrian. Initiative is 22. Hey! You I got up, an initiative fact. of one. <laughs> Almost like I'm tied up in a bag. <laughs> hey! Hey, I slipped the bag some more. You're all right. All right. So do you, do you remember the other night, Frank, I pulled out my War for the Crown dice and I was rolling horribly? So uh, please tell me you're keeping that tradition alive. I switched to my mummy's mask dice because technically you're, you know, we're doing the Osiris and things soon enough, you know, technically we're on Absalon. And the first official roll of the night, well, a couple of them were crappy, but the first announced one is a two. So he's just, you know, hesitating. So leading with nice. our, leading with the Kitsune. Um, I would like to finish cutting him out. Yep. No, no, like, that, oh, that's funny. You're just, she's like, oi! Calling for reinforcements, and you just kind of like do that pause, and then you like double time going back to the cutting. <laughs> you're like, it's like killing a kid, like the kid puts a hand on an apple on a cart, and you're like, don't touch that. And the kid just like just moves quicker to get away from you know. <laughs> hey. I'm new to this, I don't know what to do. It was like the dog stealing your treat off the table, don't. And the dog just looks at you and goes, decides it's faster, and goes, yoink, <laughs> gone. Yep, that's great. 
Okay. So you cut away. So as a standard action, okay, I'll let you slip, you know. Now, last action, it was only a move action to get up on this cart, which gave you a standard action, which allowed you to kind of like, you know, slit up the bag. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's open. So imagine a sleeping bag. Okay. That's completely done up. And we insert old man Arif head first with feet sticking out the top. Now let's put it on the back of a horse wagon and you're standing there and getting distracted. You jump onto the cart, alerting the guy and you would take in the second action to, you know, undo the zipper as it were all the way to the end. Right now it isn't around the cap. So you don't see his head, but basically from shoulders down, Frank, you're free of the bag. You're still bound at the wrists. And she's luckily, like I said, uh, I believe that somewhere in there I missed it, but I'll give it to you was, you know, the feet were freed. So she kind of cut your foot bindings, cut the sack and cut your feet free. So your feet are free. You are bound and gagged and your, you know, your hands are together. Okay. That's you. And I believe you are up. Sweet. I will, you know, my, my head is still kind of cloaked in this bag, but I'll try to roll off of the cart. And stand up. Okay. If you roll to your one side, you're on the edge of the cart. There's nowhere to go. If you roll to towards her, she's in the way. If you sit up, you look like those comical, uh, comical undead guys in body bags that sit up in the morgue. If you want to just kind of like shuffle down, you know, like butt scoot straight off the end because your feet are pointing off the end of this cart. Your head's pointing towards the driver and you're crammed on like on one edge. Oh, no, I'm totally going to just sit up then. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So you tell them to hold still. You get busted, you cut the bag, and then he moves again, and he sits straight up. <laughs> That's one move. I don't understand what you're saying. Do you want to get up, Frank? Uh, if I can, yeah. Yeah, sure. All right, then. Can I, I have well, a dexterity check? Because, like, standing, because you can't sort of plant your feet. You know, you'd see how the, the proverbial oh, sleeping bag would... Ver- actually, yeah. no, I would have kind of sat up, remained seated. Okay. But then if I can't, I'll scoot, you know, kind of butt scoot towards the edge of the uh, yep. wagon. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Standing up and dexterity checks. Or, or, I, I've got the old knees. Not as spry as I used to be. Okay. Thinking to yourself. Okay. Sit up. Murmur, murmur. Towards your direction, you see a foreign man. Um, Katapesh or Siri, Gurundi or uh, what do they call him? Karasong, I believe. Um not from here, from the south lands, dark skin, big waxed old man mustache, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, the turban wrap still on his head, wearing the homespun robe that he said sandals, looks at you, mm-hmm. murmurs in your face, and then starts butt scooting, right? And hops off the end of the cart. And now you end your turn, Frank, standing at the end of the cart, facing out. You are on a dock. There is a large boat right there. You see sailors and a couple of mercs just kind of like, what? looking confused because this guy's screaming for them to like on him kind of position ahead of you is the end of the dock and water open inner sea of Absalon. Cause you know, at least now, you know, from the time span, they put you in a room, they put you on a cart, they moved you around. You know what I mean? There was no boat before. You don't think you'd left the city or gone mm-hmm. into the mountains as far as you could tell. So you're pretty sure that this is Absalon city docks. So who does it look like? Cut me loose. Ashley, can you just, okay, turning around, you see a woman on her knees or like that one proverbial kneel down with the leg up, dagger in hand, cuts you loose, and you look like what? Um, she is probably average in stature, five five or so with long dark hair. Um, top half of her face would normally be covered in a mask, but it's kind of up on top of her head, and she's just holding the dagger looking at you like, well, that's not what I expected in that bag. Do you wear armor? She does. She has studded leather armor on. Okay. Is it dark? Okay. So do you look it's nefarious? Dark. Do you look nefarious She's... at all? Like you don't look like a dock worker. You look like like someone armed and armored and masked up. Yeah, she doesn't look nefarious, but she's okay. she's she's you know she she tries to blend in the best she can. So she's dark clothing. Okay. I'll just kind of look at her, take a quick, you know, survey of my surroundings. <laughs> <laughs> You would have to circle around the side of the cart, go right past the driver and up towards the dock. But I'm assuming that's what he's going to do. He's, he bolts for it, right? So now we're down to him again. And he, you know, he's looking down at this point. He's calling for them. He 
as a move action, I draw my sword. And as difficult terrain, I kind of clamber over the back of the buck seat and into the wagon with you. All the while calling for my buddies. And Arif hasn't moved yet, though he's about to bolt. But you're the armed person that's, you know, in my way or could plunge in my back. So he engages you. However, drawing my, even though I can sort of draw and move as one action, which he does, um, he tries to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, see, demor- d- intimidate like demoralizing a player is you know up to the player but he'll have a go you know he makes an intimidate check and he's like you bloody well put that back pointing at the old man like he's a thing it don't belong to you it belongs to us or you have to deal with the entire devil's claw company holding his short sword out wearing his own leather armor it's your go what do you do you know, I don't believe in slavery. I'm pretty sure he belongs to himself. And I would throw my dagger at him. Okay. Uh, he's right in front of you. That okay, would, then I'm just going to take a swipe at him with the okay. dagger. I say that would provoke. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. 17 to hit. Well, let's have a look at our bad guys. Hi, I'm a Devil's Claw mercenary. I I, I seem I appear to be wearing um, uh, oh cha- sorry not leather armor. Uh, he wears this fashionable chain shirt, good protection. Uh, they have that dark padded sort of sh- type of thing, but you see the chain collar, and he carries a short sword as I mentioned earlier. Um, but funny enough, because he didn't completely cover his armor, there's the proverbial chain sticking out the bottom, and the the chain cuffs. You know what I'm saying? Like they put the t-shirt on over so you don't look like a bright shining chainmail. It's to make it look dark. Right, you see where the armor ends, and taking advantage, shank the thigh, stubio, damage. You hit two damage, two points of damage. Okay, so and you don't believe I... in slavery? Big smile, stab. <laughs> and then Crunch. I would my withers hop yeah, off good. and uh. Oh, you stab and run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, do you want a five foot step off the back of the cart and just rely on acrobatics to land so that you do not provoke? Or do you wish to like just move away and get more distance, but you will provoke attack of opportunity? Because you will leave me more threatening square, you are. (laughs) Um, no, I'll hop off and do acrobatics. Right. (laughs) I fall on my butt. That is a five acrobatics. That is a five acrobatics. Okay. I'll do the little salute in there. Bye-bye. Step back and you go to step off or whatever. And Arif hasn't really moved. He's still kind of like darting around the end of the cart there. And you step back and he kind of like accidentally sort of left, right, and just sort of like shoulder moves into you to take your way. And you suddenly fill that space and fall on your butt prone. <laughs> Frank. Looking for a way to escape, warning her to run, looking around frantically and just, you know, bobbing around in your square. She gets a little too close to you. You nudge her and she just kind of whoop slips off the cart and lands hard on her back. You're only five foot in the air, like the back of the Puryo cart. So there's no damage involved besides, you know, your dignity. Um, <laughs> Frank, Old Man Arif, what do you do? I said run. <laughs> I can actually what understand him. <laughs> what for? What wrong? I I look up to the the guard that's you know brandishing a short sword at us. I just kind of shake my head no, and then run. Okay. Um, my idea is if I'm the the treasure of the property, he'll come after me, leaving her alone. Hopefully. Yeah. So I will. Bolt up the dock towards the city? I will provoke an attack of opportunity if that's the thing. Uh, no, yeah. actually, because like he's in the front of the cart. She was on the back of the cart. Now she okay. stepped another five feet to go where you are. So you're actually okay. 10 feet away from or the you know two squares away. I don't know okay. If 10 feet, but no, you're you're clean. Now, if you run, cl- if you hug the cart, he could reach over it and possibly, you know what I mean? But you could, like I said, if you want to move sort of an, a bigger L shape out and around, if you just kind of like hug the cart and run up, uh, then yeah, he can, might smack you. You said my hands are tied. Can I, are they tied in front of me or behind me? In front of you. You're like, okay. they, they see you as a feeble old man. You're not like a big, you're just kind of like, you know, 
oh, he's carrying the holy symbol and he's got the robes of friend. Maybe he's a cleric. Uh... All right, so I'll reach up and pull the gag out. Okay. Oh, it did. Ha ha! You thought you had me, fucker. And then take off. <laughs> I know. It's a family show, Arif. <laughs> I said sucker. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, t take off down the dockway. Oh, you, you, you're in for it now when they find out you've let an old man get away. You know, hoping to draw him away from <laughs> the one that set me loose. All right. So are you trying to demoralize him with an intimidate check here and then move? Or was that free talking and you're going to do a double move and get the hell out of here? Uh, no, that was only like a single move because I am still trying to draw him away. Okay. So you're like, you're just kind of doing the nani nani boom kind of boom, yeah, yeah, okay. just kind of taunting him. Yeah. Okay. So taunting. There you go. Um, taunting. Uh, you know what? I actually forget what that runs off. Is that intimidate? Uh, I think it is. I'm pretty sure taunting is intimidate. Yeah. Let's. So give me intimidate. Let's see how daunting, right. how daunting and taunting the bound the bound up old guy is. Dude, I'm I'm pretty fierce. Look at me. Ah, sixteen. Uh, okay. <laughs> not afraid of you. <laughs> But he does seem very worried glancing at them. Now he's worried that even though he called them over, that they're going to come too soon and see that you're getting away. The insult strikes home. Yep. And you bolt. What's your movement? Uh, I have a 30-foot move. Okay. Well, spending a little bit. Let's see. It's a full round action to go, like, to try and open the throttle to that three times move once you get going. So you spend a, move, you spend a standard action, uh, taunting, a single move action, and head up the dock. Now, you, um, what, you have to dodge some crates and stuff, so you're not getting very far. What, what time of day is this? And this is, is evening. The, it, it's dark. And is, is the uh, the dock area, is it populated at all by anyone other than these guys? There's There seems to be, like, the odd sailor about, but it does must be late enough at night. There's just some lanterns and, you know, that kind okay. of thing going on. The ships are far enough apart that they have watches or whatever, and they're holding the lights out, but they can't, you know, you see guys on ships holding up lanterns really high listening, but they can't really see. There's no light here, um, and, you're, and, and it's dark. And, okay. And as I flee down the dock, I'll start shouting for the guards. Yeah. Now they these are humans that can't see either. So there's that odd lantern light they were carrying, yep. and off the side of the ship they have lanterns because they just loaded, so there is light. And I'd even go so far as saying there's a single torch or light on the cart so the guy can see and not drive it right off the dock in the dark. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that light oh. spill ends at like, you know, 10, 20 feet off the front Oh, that would have been a sweet thing to grab on the way by. <laughs> <laughs> I have the light goodbye. You want to go back for okay. it? You're not that far away. You get to the edge of the light radius and realize you're blind and have to come back, but sure. Okay. I'll, I'll kind of hover at the edge of light's radius then just to, you know, see what he does. Okay. Well, it's my turn now. Okay, you're on your butt. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to make my own acrobatics check, hop the side of the cart, and go after the old man. But I'm going to grab the lantern first, because <laughs> I want to see. Like you said, you're on the edge of dimness. 14 plus, yes, he turns around with his free hand that's not short-sorted, plucks the lantern off the peg, and hops over the side of the cart, and sticks the landing. Hands go up. Thank you, Nadia Komenich. Perfect 10. Glances over the shoulders of free action just to see if the Kitsune saw. No? Okay, never mind. And okay. comes trucking along after you. And okay. catches up to you. Yep. Stops in front of you, and, you know, that's me done because I... Oh, you know what? No. I, um... It's a move action to retrieve the item. Yep. And then I hop over the cart, which is part of my movement, and then yep. get get up to you. So, yeah, I'm, I'm like 10 feet away. I'm barely, you know, just getting close to you. 5, 10. But he's coming after you, yes. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> Vict goal, victory achieved, because now he's like, you know, coming I, at I you. I get that look on my face like my plan has worked. Oh, shit. My plan has worked. <laughs> oh, no. He, he's he's going to get me. Um, but, yeah, I'll start making a, a hasty retreat. All right. So the Kitsune on her back, the old man hovering on light's edge. And a bunch of people stacked at a door. And we go to commercial. No, we're actually going to end the episode here. And when we come back, there will be rules abound. And we hope Oops. you've enjoyed this episode. Say goodnight, Frank. Uh, good night. <laughs>